adjust it in there so the red works looks fancy. It's kind of always been one of those things as I was a kid growing up thinking, Hoyt, Hoyt. Now we're gonna see if this weird ass looking bow can actually shoot. I will confess that last week I, have a, I had a problem. Remember the Bowtech video where I let down the Bowtech and I went from basically right here to all of a sudden that 70 pounds hitting and something wonky happened. And throughout the next day, as I was shooting the Elite doing its walk back tests, my elbow just started feeling worse and worse and worse and worse. So this prompted me to actually call a sports medicine doctor who I'm going to have on, which I'm super excited about to kind of talk about some of the stretches that we can do. But today, before I actually start shooting the Hoyt, I have let it way down. Uh, I, I'm, I'm not even gonna paper tune the thing. So when you're listening for the bow, I don't want you to, uh, to listen to the bow, nothing like that, because it's not tuned all the way in. This is me making sure that I'm not gonna hurt myself as we continue to move forward. But still working on the technique. So again, I've dropped the poundage way down. So from what I can tell, John has basically chased down 95% of what it takes to execute a shot properly. And what we're diving into here in episode nine is some of the more subtleties. So this is the first time that he's saying, go ahead and count your score. So today what John was talking about is mirroring. So basically making sure that your grip on your front hand and your angle of your release hand are mirrored. So you see how my knuckles are kind of this angle? What he's talking about is making sure that your release hand is that angle as well. And what I'm already noticing, because I've practiced a little bit today, is I tend to have an arm that's turned up more. And what I'm noticing already is that with this little tweak, I'm pulling through the shot more and I'm finishing where I've always thought, why do I not finish back, like pulled into that bicep more? And I'm already realizing that that's what's starting to happen. So again, we're just kind of at that last little 5%, those last little tweaks that it takes. And what he's talking about is this will help with some of those lateral misses left to right. I already feel stronger when I'm back in that back position. Another thing that he was talking about is D-loop length. So you see how long my D-loop is? It's not crazy long, but basically because I use a handheld, I'm able to turn that without interacting with the arrow at all. I'm not touching the knock, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not twisting the string. There's enough play in here that I can actually make that twist with this handheld release, whereas with a regular wrist release, your D-loop can be a little bit tighter. So keep that in mind if you're shooting a hinge or you're shooting a thumb button release to make sure that your, that your D-loop is not uh, binding when you're turning that hand over. So you're gonna see me looking at myself in the screen a fair bit throughout this using it as a mirror. I would recommend either setting up a camera that you can see yourself in or draw in front of a mirror and then let down. Draw in front of the mirror or turn and shoot and let down. I think this will become something that you really get the feel of pretty quickly. So let's give it a shot. I've got the uh, Hoyt Carbon RX4 Redworks Edition. This thing is like completely the opposite of all the other bows. So let's try a shot and what I'm gonna do is aim it at you and then I'm gonna turn and actually shoot at the target. So I'm still thinking about all my mechanisms that we've learned so far. Feet set, shoulder position, grip. The draw is gonna be a little awkward because of the elbow thing I'm going through, but I'm gonna try. So now I'm thinking about mirroring. And again, realizing, look at my back, my back hand. This is comfortable for me. This is probably where I should be more and it's actually turning this thing down and tucking into a different place below my chin. It's bringing it down. It's bringing it down enough that I may actually have to adjust my peep as I'm going along. I don't know, we'll see here. So let's take a shot with that. And watch the way this finishes when I make this turn.
I jerked the trigger a little bit on that one. I didn't just pull and let it go through because I think I was probably trying to exaggerate it. So let's try another one. Thinking about that hand position, mirroring that front hand, feeling those. Sinking in through my back and then just starting to pull. That was way better. Oh, that hurts the elbow. So this is what I was used to right here. That's where that hand is. And what it needs to be is curled over a little bit like that to match that front. And it feels so weird because it's gonna tuck farther underneath my chin. Like literally, I may have to raise my peeps up an eighth of an inch to a quarter of an inch on every one. But that is probably where I need to be. Now I get to turn all the way around to try to shoot. So what I'm gonna go do is, I'm gonna actually get a different bow because the RX4 is not dialed in at all. I'm gonna go pick a different one and I'm going to shoot an actual target that has a 10 spot on it. And I'm gonna count my score uh, on a round of 30 arrows, so 10 ends of three, and see how I do and continue to track progress as I'm going forward, thinking with the mindset of everything that we've gone through, focusing on each and every step and slowing that shot down every single time, making sure that I'm sunk through my back for everything, making sure that I've got that wrist turned out, just all the little details and then seeing how those ends play out. And then I'll show it to you guys. See, I should have shot a target at the beginning of all of this and actually kept track because I feel like I'd be doing much, much better now. Dang it. Maybe when I do the 2020 School of Knock, and we'll see how it comes together. All right, let's go do some shooting. Make sure you stretch. You don't want to end up like old man McDonald over here. If you guys are wondering why I'm always wearing my jacket inside, it's because I don't turn the heat on down here. At least I don't until it gets like sub freezing and it's always pretty freaking cold. One thing I noticed throughout the entire School of Knock that we've done so far is I feel like the tension that I was holding was kind of in front of me. I felt like there was a cable that was running through my body, but it was being held in front of me. And as the time went on, it felt like that cable kind of moved behind me. And this felt like the last piece. As I was finishing up the shooting of the Elite, where I was moving back to 90 and 100 yards, I really started to kind of feel that strength through my back, like really started kind of embracing hardening through my back and that pin float I felt like just kind of settled down kind of calmed down now I know that I could go overboard and I'll probably do a video on that as well just kind of trying and figuring out like where that sweet spot is so much of archery is about feel and feel is so difficult to express to someone that it should feel this way the amount of pressure that you're supposed to have on your release is supposed to feel this way when you draw this is what it should feel when you're holding here's what the tension should feel like it's feel 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 and hunters are probably not the best communicators when it comes to this kind of thing so i'll do my best to communicate in a future video what it's supposed to feel like or what i think it's supposed to feel like but I really liked this week because it seemed like a little bit of icing on the cake as far as just that one last little thing for me that I felt like, oh, okay. And I, I genuinely feel like my groups have gotten tighter as we've gone along. I thought the elbow thing was just gonna be like one or two days, but I literally woke up the next day after shooting the initial video outside and my elbow just feels wrecked. Like it, it hurts, it's a, it's a sharp pain. I'm having a hard time moving it around. So I'm, I'm having to take a break. So I, I screwed up a couple of things in the prime review and I wanted to address them real quick. So this is how you actually mount the back bar right here. I thought that it was something back here, but that didn't really make much sense again because of the way the bevel kind of goes into the hole. But you you set it on the inside of the riser. It's pretty cool. It's it's I mean super low. Just like everybody else, you know, normally they're up in here or even even you're coming off with a uh, you know a sidebar up here. Yeah, sucker's way down there. 
So the second thing is the adjustment of the cams. You actually shim them. You don't do anything with the, with the cables. I think I just had copied the notes over from the RX-4 and I just had messed up and not to, and not actually uh, changed that note. So I apologize. Even now looking at it, I'm like, really? McDonald's, you're kind of a moron. Although, I do think you could get some adjustment out of this if you started messing with the cables. But don't do it. That's not what they recommend. The third thing, and this is more just like a kind of a cool feature of this. There's two little dots on each cam. One right here. You can't see it because it's off camera, so I should move it. There's two small dots on each cam. One right here, which you probably can't see because it's barely off camera, and then one where the actual uh, yoke attaches, right here. And it's the same on both cams. And if you take a piece of serving thread or of you know whatever you want to whatever you want to use, but that's something like kind of narrow, maybe fishing line, and you stretch that across and you line it up, you can actually check the timing of these bows without a drawboard by just stretching the serving and checking to see if those line up. So that's pretty cool, like kind of a little uh, handy quick feature if you don't if you don't have a drawboard to check the cam timing. So that's pretty cool. I apologize every time I mess up, you guys are great to point it out and I will always try to, uh, to come back later. I, I think I've decided that what I'm gonna do is come back later in another video and fix it, which doesn't help if you watched the original video and got misinformation, but I guess maybe that'll just keep you coming back to see what I've actually screwed up in the past. I don't know. Again, I apologize. I was wrong. I'll admit it. Thank you guys for watching. I'm Brandon McDonald. problem is when we're in here there's no way out the mouse i'm having to take a break dude that mouse is back just keep cruising around gonna go shit on my computer